Hi, welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. And today, we're gonna to talk about companion planting. Okay, so today I wanna to just scratch the surface of the gardening concept of companion planting. Today I basically wanna tell you, help you build a foundation of what companion planting is why you should do it and then in the next couple of videos we'll show you some examples of companion planting so what is companion planting well companion planting in the gardening world is a relatively new concept now we can trace companion planting all the way back to the native americans <clears throat> And maybe even a little bit further, but the Native Americans made it a little bit more famous. The basic idea behind companion planting is planting plants that benefit each other. Like, for example, the Native Americans used to plant corn and beans together. And this would benefit both plants. They would sow the corn, let the corn get up about six or eight inches, and then they would sow the beans. Now, as the corn continued to grow, the beans started to grow, and they would grow up the stalk of the corn. Now, this was benefit to both plants. The beans had something to grow on, and as we all know, corn has a very shallow root system. So, the beans climbing up onto the corn would help stabilize the stalk so in high winds they wouldn't they won't really blow over as easy and so companion planting was born <clears throat> so now fast forward to 2019 we have learned a tremendous amount about the benefits of companion planting which plants, if planted together, will help repel insects, return nutrients to the soils, uh, repel other plants that are harmful to this plant or to that plant? Now, there is a very good resource out there available to you guys, and the Amazon link will be in the description. The book is Carrots Love Tomatoes and Roses Love Garlic. It is a very great companion planting book. It makes it extremely easy to understand. It gives you lists of which plants work well together and which ones you need to avoid. For example, fennel. Fennel doesn't work well with anybody. Fennel hates everybody and everybody hates fennel. So if you're planting fennel, you need to plant him in a far corner of your homestead. But this book is great. It gives you a little bit of history about companion planting. But the most important thing is that it goes through and lists, like for example here, celery. Celery goes well with leeks, tomatoes, cauliflower, and cabbage, while bush beans and celery seem to give mutual assistance. And it goes on to explain why those things work well with celery. Now, in future videos, we're going to show you the three sisters, the pizza spaghetti sauce garden, um, and we're going to show you these different aspects, and then we're going to have some of these beds planted with just regular plants where we just kind of put all the Brussels sprouts in there and all the cabbage in there, where we didn't do any companion planting. And we'll show you the difference between with insect uh, pest problems, pest issues. Uh, we'll show you how, it, by companion planting, it made each plant healthier and benefited. And we were able to, it was able to produce more fruit. And so on and so on. And this will go on throughout our spring, summer, fall gardening season. Like I said, this video was just about to scratch the surface, give you a little bit of history about companion planting, 
where it comes from and kind of give an introduction to the next couple of videos that are coming. We've practiced companion planting all of last year and we're doing it again this year and we've seen nothing but benefits from it. And we're going to share these benefits with you. So till next time, thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead. God bless and have a nice day. Thank you.